Hi, everybody. I'm Gina Sager, and I'm delighted to be with you. Um, I meant to be on Facebook Live, but unfortunately, since I'm not very tech savvy, I can't figure out how to do it. So I'm sending you this Zoom in, uh, video. Hopefully that will serve, and I'm happy to take any questions uh, that you may have after I post it. So I, first of all, let me thank Victoria for a beautiful uh, virtual retreat. It's such an honor to be a part of the Activated Woman work. And um, it was, I hope that my talk the other day was enjoyable. I know there are plenty of awesome speakers and I hope everybody's enjoying. I wanted to come to you today though, to embellish a little bit on what I alluded to in my talk um, from the other day, um, particularly with regard to eating energy medicine. You know, I think that in the world in which we live, it's really critical, it's been critical for me to start to understand the impact of the energetics of the world on our own physical being, both the energies of other people, the energies of the electromagnetic world in which we live, and in particular, as we start to roll out this 5G technology, I mean, I think that those of us who are energetically sensitive are really gonna start to notice some physical, mental, and emotional effects. So the more that we can do to protect ourselves from these effects, I think the more skillfully we're gonna be able to show up in the world. If you're like me, what has happened as you find yourself to be sensitive to such things is that you find yourself cutting out more and more things which distance you from the world, which is really not where I wanna live. So as I've started to add these energy medicine techniques, what has happened for me is that I have been able to cultivate the possibility of creating a more resilient energy body so that I can be more stable and less affected in situations that would normally really be hard for me to manage. So let me back up just a moment and remind everyone that we're energetic beings. You know, we are, our hearts beat and can be measured in electrical activity. Our brain waves are electrical. We have an energetic uh, being that, that really encompasses all of our life. And you probably know this just anecdotally, when you're in the presence of someone who's either really, really positive or really, really negative, you feel that in your body in a way that words really can't quite speak to. So the reason, one of the many reasons that I find Eden Energy Medicine to be so incredibly important in this day and age is that we have the capacity to start to retrain our energy body. Now, I teach mindfulness and we're trying to recreate neural pathways, but these techniques actually tend to work right in the moment. And so that's why I find them to be so useful in, when there is a, a crisis or a perceived emergency. The particular meridians that I want to talk about today are triple warmer and spleen. And they really do correlate very nicely with the masculine and feminine aspects of our being. Triple warmer is responsible for keeping us safe. It really is the energetic correlate to the fight or flight or freeze response to the autonomic nervous system, to the vagus nerve. The spleen, on the other hand, is the mother, the nurturer, the tender, the one who likes to take care of and heal and rest and digest. I probably don't have to tell you that we're profoundly tipped toward the triple warmer end of this spectrum. And curiously enough, these two meridians are opposite one another in the 24 hour cycle of flow through all of the 14 meridians of traditional Chinese medicine. Because we're wired for survival, triple warmer pulls energy from all of the other 13 meridians to keep itself strong, to keep us safe, which is brilliant and wonderful. However, we're misunderstanding the number of times in life when we're not safe. So triple warmer happens to be the keeper of habits. The habit it's keeping right now is that we're not safe and we have to continually be hypervigilant and on alert. But the habit that we can train it to is that we are safe. And once we find a sense of safety, it opens us up to the joy and capacity to be present and to nurture and tend and be at greater ease with ourselves. And that's really the reason that this is called to me so deeply. Now, as I share these techniques, you may very well laugh and say, I already do that stuff. And that's just another manifestation of how brilliant your body already is. So one of the first things I want to share is what's called triple warmer reactivity pose. So the triple warmer meridian runs from the temple. There's a hollow on this side, right just above to the outside of your eyebrow. It runs across over a, a top of the ear, down the back of the neck, all the way down the outside of the arm and off the fourth finger. So 
and it's on both sides of the body. So when you feel stressed out, you could simply trace triple warmer meridian backward. It's like releasing the energy from the system and just moving it through. So that's one way that you can work with yourself when you feel a little overwrought. Another way is to realize that in the center of the forehead, above each of your eyes, are what are called by Donna Eden, oh my God points. And I know you know this, when you're stressed out, put your head in your hands and say, oh my God, this is a nightmare. Interestingly enough, this is the place where stomach and bladder meridians run. Stomach is responsible for grounding you into the earth. Bladder meridian calms the nervous system. So when you add a triple warmer piece to this, what we do is we make a big okay sign. So the thumb compresses the index fingernail, thumbs rest in those triple warmer points, and these three other fingers rest in the center of the forehead above each eye. When you close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths, you may very quickly feel any kind of frazzled or jangly energy start to settle. Sometimes when I'm really wound up and I start to settle in, I'll feel either a deeper breath or even a yawn. That's just a sign of your nervous system releasing and relaxing. Oh, so just a few breaths here. And if you wish, just drag your fingers across the forehead to the temples. If you want, just keep going over the ears, hang off the shoulders for a breath or two. Oh, and then drop your hands to your heart. So maybe you can feel that any edginess that may have been present as we began has started to settle down. If you're really struggling, you could do the same thing, resting with your hands on your shoulders and drawing hands to the heart. And between the fourth and fifth fingers is where the acupuncture meridian triple warmer runs. And so you can add a tapping to that. So you would just tap in that space between the fourth and the fifth finger. Tap about for 10 seconds and then pause and take a breath. And then tap again for about 30 seconds. Now be curious about the way that you're tapping. If you're already anxious, you might find yourself really pounding and that really doesn't soothe the nervous system. So you want to, you want to offer a gentle but consistent tap that would feel to the body like a heartbeat. You're just gently inviting the body to settle down letting triple warmer rest. So I hope that you notice a little bit of settling with that. The other thing I'd like to share with you is, again, understanding that triple warmer and spleen are really sort of balancing one another. They're the yin and the yang, the masculine and feminine. And we want to try to come back into a place of greater integration and balance. I know the activated woman is all about enhancing the feminine, but I think it's important to find a happy medium here because there are some masculine qualities that are very important, and this is really not even gender-based anyway. It's about achieving a place of integration between yin and yang, masculine, feminine, left and right, you know, effort and surrender. It's that in-between place where we are open to more possibilities than we know. We're integrated and balanced, and that integrated and balanced place tends to show up in the world as kindness and compassion. So the more we can step to the middle, you know, balancing and enhancing and honoring both our masculine and feminine qualities, I think the more skillful and balanced our offerings are going to be. So to that end, there's something called a triple warmer spleen hug. Now the spleen acupuncture meridian begins just about a hand's breadth below the armpit. So you can just put your hand under your arm on one side and the opposite hand grabs the elbow and just gently, gently, gently rocking back and forth. 
is soothing to triple warmer and settles the nervous system. You know, so you just take a moment to really nurture. This is bringing that spleen quality of nurturing and kindness, tending, honoring. And when we do that and allow triple warmer to rest, again, we have access to joy because it is the keeper of habits and we're training it to not be so habitually anxious, but to recognize that there's a place of balance and joy. So just another minute or so, just rocking and resting. and notice how you are. And so from that sort of calmed and settled and grounded and present place, that place of integration and balance, I want to invite you to just a very short loving kindness meditation. So in the event that your mind is still feeling busy, another trick from the energy medicine world is that the right hand is masculine, the left hand is feminine. So the right hand tends to give energy, the left hand it tends to receive. So you can just place your hand, your right hand on the crown of the head and the left hand on the heart. And just imagine opening a door between your busy mind and your spacious, open, beautiful heart and spilling all of your busy mindedness. Bring the right hand down to the eyebrow center then and just invite yourself to turn in. Imagine that you're unplugging all of the senses so you don't have to worry about anything at all except for this moment. And then drop the right hand down to join left over the heart and just take a moment to feel your heartbeat. It is such an amazing and precious thing to be alive right now. And we so rarely stop and honor ourselves for our life. So just drop in. And so you're welcome to keep your hands on your heart for this meditation, but I'd like to begin it by just ringing a beautiful bell. So let your ears just take in the sound of this beautiful bell. So the, from this settled and slightly quieter place, I just invite you to bring into your awareness the parts of yourself that you love and are proud of. And just let them dance across the field of your awareness as you take note of all of your accomplishments, all of your attributes, the things that make you happy, the things you're good at and share it well in the world. Just take a moment to notice all of the things that you love that make you you. And of course, if nothing comes to mind, that's okay too. But for that, maybe you'll just rest with your hands on your heart. There's no way to do this wrong. We're just cultivating self-appreciation and sometimes it's hard to find that. So honor that as well.
But to the extent that you're able, look at all of these things that make you you, or even the reason that you don't feel proud of yourself. And imagine that you could say to all of these things, I see you. Really look at you and all of your gifts. Say thank you for these gifts. And if you're able, I love you. And really feel it from the inside. And again, if you're not able, please do not judge or criticize yourself. Just rest with hands on your heart, setting the intention to work as best you can to open your heart to yourself, to your gifts. Blessing your own heart. And then let all of your gifted parts move off to the side. And bring into your awareness the untapped potential that you contain. The unexplored resources and talents and skills that make you you, that maybe you've never even considered. Maybe they'll be clear, maybe you'll just get a sense that there's more to you than you know. And just allow this stuff to bubble up. Again, it might be clear or not, it's all okay. Just open to the vast potential that makes you you. And again, if you can't tap into that, let that be okay too. It's really hard to do so. So just rest for now, blessing your own heart. But to the extent that you're able, see this untapped potential, all of these unimaginable gifts start to bubble up and say to them, I see you. Thank you. I intend to know you and explore you. I love you. Just feel how it feels to realize you're bigger than you know. And then move all of these untapped gifts off to the side. And with your hands on your heart, imagine peeping in your heart house. Cracking the door and looking in and just taking in at the extent that you're able without overwhelming yourself. The traumas that you bear, the old wounds, the unhealed grief, <clears throat> the unprocessed emotion, any pain that keeps your heart doors closed. <clears throat> Excuse me. If it feels like too much, just close the door. Apparently there's some for me. But if you can look in, just allow a moment of compassion for the life that you have lived. For the wounds that are not healed. Notice the wounds that are healed. <clears throat> Again, try not to overwhelm yourself, but let yourself feel what is true. <clears throat> and if you get choked up, let that be. If it's too much, let that be okay too. And just bless your heart for all that you've gone through in this lifetime and potentially others. And then to the extent that you're able, say, I see you. 
bless you. I want to know you and release you. And I do love you because even the pain and the wounds have made me me. And then just take a moment to realize that these parts are not separate at all. They're all completely interwoven and intertwined in a beautiful, miraculous web of you. So bring them all together now and see yourself in your truest, most magnificent glory. Wounds and all, because that makes you you. Place one hand under the arm, the other hand on the opposite elbow. And just give yourself a hug and rock for just a moment. Just soothing, honoring, loving yourself for the life that you've led so far and the life that's yet to come. Just imagine offering yourself the love and kindness, the support and tenderness that you've longed for. Be your own best friend. And to the extent that you feel willing or able, consider these words from Mary Oliver's poem. She says, and so dark past, I'm about to do it. I'm about to forgive you for everything. I'm about to forgive you for everything. If it doesn't seem possible in this moment, just feel yourself planting a seed. It's springtime, it's the perfect time to plant such a seed and set the intention to nurture and tend it. No judgments, no criticism, just holding yourself for a moment more the way that you've longed to be held. And then allow your ears to once more take in the sound of the spell. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I hope you'll take a moment just to notice how you are. Maybe something shifted, maybe not. Maybe it's not clear what's happened yet, but that whatever has happened may well be revealed to you as you move through your day. Again, I'm apologizing because I couldn't figure out Facebook Live, but um, if you have questions or comments, once I post this Zoom video, I'll put my uh, contact information and I'm happy to answer any questions or comments that you have. It's been an honor and a pleasure to spend this time with you. I truly hope it served and I hope that you'll realize that each one of us has a unique and powerful and precious purpose in this world. The world is waiting for you exactly as you are. There's no better way to be. 
please, please, please give yourself the gift of offering yourself to yourself and then to the world. We're all waiting for you. Thank you from my heart. Take gentle care, and I hope I'll see you soon. Bye now.